Hey friends, welcome back! Whether you play video games or not, you probably heard the buzz about Black Mist Wukong recently. This game has absolutely exploded in popularity. On August 20th, when it launched on Steam, it broke all kinds of records. For the first time uh, in Steam's history, more than 37 million players were online, all thanks to the overwhelming success of Black Mist Wukong. That's just mind-blowing! What makes this even more special is that Black Mist Wukong is the first triple game designed and developed entirely by a Chinese company, a talented team, Game Science Studio. And you're probably wondering, what is a triple A game? A lot of development budget, a lot of development resources, and a lot of development time. So you see, the creation process of a triple A game clearly demands a tremendous amount of effort which speaks to the quality and attention to detail behind any game that achieves this distinction. As a Chinese, I feel an immense sense of pride and I'm so excited now to welcome you to explore Chinese culture through this incredible game. Welcome to my channel, Oriental Mark Bolo. This is Pedro. Here I love sharing anything that sparks my interest and today we are diving into, dive deep into the, this video game that's taken world by storm. Black Mist Wukong. If you've been blown away by the game's stunning views and top tier animations, but feel a little lost with its rich Chinese cultural uh, references, storylines, or characters' relationships, don't worry. Don't worry. In this video, I will break it all down for you so you can truly immerse yourself in the experience and double your enjoyment of this game. So, the first part, the grand. Background, Journey to the West. Black Miss Wukong is uh, set in the rich world of Journey to the West, one of the four great classic novels of Chinese literature. It's the first major work of romantic fantasy in Chinese literature written in the in a style that blends mythology, adventure, and religious allegory. To give you a sense of its importance, Journey to the West holds a place in Chinese culture, uh, much like the Lord of Rings or Dunes does in the West. So the Journey to the West, this book is about 800,000 words and is spread across uh, 100 chapters. It was completed in the 16th century by the author Wu Chengnen, a Chinese guy, and that time was Ming Dynasty in China. And what was happening in the West around the same time period? In Europe, the Anglo-Spanish War, sparked by uh, religious tensions, territorial disputes, and the battle for naval supremacy. The famous Spanish Armada was defeated uh, by English, marking the decline of Spanish uh, naval dominance and the rise of England's sea power. And another famous event is the French Wars of Religion. This conflict saw uh, France torn apart by religious strife, but King Henry IV ultimately brought peace by issuing the Edict of Nantes, which granted uh, religious tolerance and ended the civil war. Okay, let's bring back to Journey to the West. The now beautifully weaves together elements from Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism, with some parts being quite direct, while others are deeply uh, symbolic and subtle. Since its inception, Journey to the West has been immensely popular. It's been adapted into countless Chinese uh, drama, opera, TV shows, films, cartoons, and animations. I grew up watching various adaptations of Journey to the West, they were a huge part of my childhood. What's more, Journey to West, this story is not only famous in China, but also has huge influential across um, East Asia. And what exactly uh, the story of Journey to West? The story itself is inspired by real historic events. It follows the journey of a Tang Dynasty monk, Tang Xuanzang, also known as Tang Sanzang, who accepted the commission from Emperor of Tang Dynasty to travel to distant land of Tianzhu, the Asian name for India, in the west side of China, and humbly sought sacred Buddhist sutras. So that's why, that's why the name of the novel is Journey to the West. West here is Tianzhu, the Asian India. His mission is to bring back teachings within the Buddhist uh, sutras that could help people find a novel form of spiritual faith. But in novel, it was changed to the Tang Sanzang that tasked by the Tathagata Buddha, the founder of the Buddhism. Think of him as a big boss behind the mission and add a lot of uh, fantastical elements. 
So who does the author of Journey to West assign as uh, Tang Sanzang's companions on this epic adventure? So meet the team. Meet the team, the extraordinary journey uh, squad. Uh, Sun Wukong, the star of the game's title, the Black Mist Wukong. So who is Wukong? Wukong is a monkey born from a stone that absorbs the essence of heaven and earth. In Chinese, these species of monkey, like him, are called Hu Sun, which inspired his family name, Sun. He trained under the guidance of uh, Taoist master Pu Ti Zu Shi, one of the highest deities in Taoism, where Wukong learned the 72 transformations, the ability to shapeshift into anything. By the way, why 72 transformations? Why 72? In Taoism, the number 72 is symbolic and simply means a whole lot. And later, Wukong acquired a magic weapon, Ru Yi Jin Gu Bang, from the East China Sea. It is a stuff that can turn size with 13,500 pounds, and it is uh, just legendary as he is. Wukong was later recruited to join the team by Guan Yin Bodhisattva, the project's uh, initiator and strategist. Wukong is a superhero of the group, always tackling the tough challenges. And the second team member, Zhu Bazian, originally the Marshal of Heavenly Canopy. Uh, responsible for guarding the Milky Way, he could perform 36 transformations. 36 is also a symbolic number as well, and just representing fewer powers than Sun Wukong. After he got drunk and flirted with the goddess Chang'e at a celestial banquet, he was punished by being banished to the human world, taking the form of half-human, half-pig creature. By the way, does the name of goddess Chang'e sound familiar? That's right, she's moon goddess in Chinese mythology. Thus, China National Space Administration named our Chinese lunar exploration missions after her, like the Chang'e first prop. Okay, back to our story. Chu Bajian is the second companion assigned into the team. Despite his uh, laziness and love of food, he is also hardworking when needed, loyal, and always here to assist Sun Wukong when the going gets tough. His unexpected strength often saves the day. And the third team member, Sha Wu Jing, formerly the general in heaven, and he was demoted to uh, model realm for accidentally breaking a crystal goblet. He became the guardian of a river on earth and was later recruited by Guan Yin as well to join the team. Though quiet and reserved, Shao Ting is the dependable one, always carrying the team's luggage and providing unwavering support from the background. And the last team member, the White Long Horse. The final piece of the puzzle, originally uh, the White Long was a celestial being as well and the third son of the Long King. In the story, Tang Sanzang's horse, I mean the original real horse, was eaten by White Long. But to atone for his actions, the White Long transformed into Tang Sanzang's new steed, thus joined the group. And here's a fun fact. Uh, in Chinese culture, Long symbolizes good fortune and prosperity, which is why Long are beloved in China. Unlike the dragon, which is imagined as fire-breathed monsters in Western myths, Chinese Long are symbols of auspiciousness and good luck. Now we've introduced the team, let's talk about the challenges they face on their journey. Overcoming the obstacles, the 81 tribulations. On the road to Tianzhu, uh, Tang Sanzang's team had, had to travel over mountains, cross rivers, and face endless challenges. They encountered numerous Yao Guai. What is Yao Guai? Yao Guai are some monsters or weird uh, creatures from Chinese mythology, each with their own supernatural powers out of whom wanted to devour Tang Sanzang because it was rumored that uh, eating him would grant immortality. <laughs> Sounds crazy, huh? Um, time and again, Sun Wukong used his wits and strength to defeat this Yao Guai and keep Tang Sanzang safe. In total, they faced these 81 tribulations. Each tribulation was tasked um, a test of their commitment, courage, wisdom, and ability to work together as a team. These hardships also helped shape their characters and sharpen their minds. Each of these uh, 81 tribulations described in the novels carries deeper meanings. Some reflect uh, the force of nature, others symbolize societal uh, issues or historical events, and many tap into the human heart. 
These challenges stress that in life we all face difficulties from different angles, and it's only by overcoming these tribulations and trials we can grow and achieve our own personal true scriptures. After conquering all these 81 tribulations, the four companions finally reached the, uh, the sacred land of Tianzhu, which locates the rest of China, obtained the true scriptures, and were each promoted to Buddhists, essentially civil servants of heaven. And after successfully obtained the scriptures, they returned to Tang Kingdom in the East Side and present them to the Tang Emperor, completing their mission. These stories not only highlight the importance of spiritual growth, but also embody the Buddhist spirit of helping others, and, and at the same time, they reflect the age-old theme of, punish, uh, uh, of punishing evil and promoting good. And connecting to our game, Black Myth Wukong, um, now that you know the story of Journey to the West, and let's dive into the main stage, our main stage, Black Myth Wukong. The story takes place after Sun Wukong and Tang San Zhang successfully obtained the scriptures after being promoted to Buddha. Sun Wukong, true to his nature, longed for freedom. He wouldn't want to enjoy the constraints of heaven's bureaucracy, uh, preferring the peaceful, uh, carefree life back to his hometown Hua Guoshan, celebrated for its breathtaking and picturesque scenery. And however, heaven did trust him fearing that he might become a rebellious force, and as a result, Erlang Shen joined the spirit god, and the four heavenly kings led an army of heavenly soldiers to attack Hua Guoshan. Don't worry, I will cover these new characters in future videos. During his uh, fierce battle with Erlang Shen, Sun Wukong's power were unexpectedly suppressed by the return of the Golden Hoop. A Golden Hoop? It is a headband, a potent magical artifact that once controlled his power, preventing him from using his full strength. He was ultimately defeated, killed in battle, and his spirit transformed into a giant stone. His reins were scattered into six parts. And here's where you, the excited player, come in. In this game, you play as a, a destined monkey warrior from Hua Guoshan, tasked with finding these six scattered relics to restore and resurrect Sun Wukong. So this is the epic backdrop of Black Myth Wukong. I hope that knowing this background will give you a deeper, more immersive experience as you play. I always believe that um, a truly great game can transcend borders, and Black Myth Wukong has done just that. I couldn't be more proud. Finally, I wish you have an incredibly exciting time playing this game. Please enjoy. In the next video, we will explore some of the uh, other new key characters uh, featured in Black Myth Wukong. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and share it to your friends. And thank you very much. And if you're hungry for more, I highly recommend this YouTube channel, um, Overly Sarcastic Productions. Their videos on uh, Journey to the West are very awesome. So this is all for today. Thank you once again and see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.